I think the idea for it came from the, the, the music centres in Manchester, Manchester Education Committee, as it was then. Um, they'd started a department, uh, an ethnic music department, as it was called then, and they wanted to encourage different schools to sort of take part in it. And at that time, Seymour Road was kind of buzzing with music. It was phenomenal. It had guitar teachers. It had uh, the wonderful Mrs. Shaker who did music throughout the school. Um, brass teachers, string teachers. It was amazing. And so the steel steel pans just became part of it. And I was asked if I wanted to um, teach. So I, I became one of three. They had three teachers there. They had me with my band. They had Mrs. Shaker. Mrs. Shaker taught the, the whole school steel pan. And a bloke called Robbie Yates, who was from Trinidad. And he came in from the music centres and taught everyone else. And he also could tune the pans. He used to tune them by banging with the hammers. It was a terrible noise, but they, it's quite hard, hard thing to do. So th that was how it all started. And, and we started with a, 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 a small group of uh, children in my class. And we... We start by. I remember the, the first performance we ever gave was in in the the interval of a, I think it was a pantomime the staff were putting on, and we I think we did Jingle Bells, and I thought oh we're we get, we're going places you know Jingle Bells wow, and, and then we got further and further, and I I just became intrigued with um, arranging European classical music for Steel Pan, just the. Just seeing the score for orchestra and then then transcribing it for steel pans and it was amazing because you'd take one part you'd take say a double bass part and and then you'd teach that part to one 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 of the children and then another part and you'd put it all together like a jigsaw puzzle well, I just find it fascinating and from that point um from putting all the music together. We hit we hit it lucky because Thames Television had a competition called Fan First Being Musicians, and it was open to all everybody in the, the country. And we did um, Elgar's um, Pomp and Circumstance March, and we got through to the final, and we came second or third there, and we went to London and run television, and that gave us that that kind of what we did our profile, and that that was a that was the beginning. And that was the that was with the first band that I had, and at that that time it kind of transitioned to the next band, and the next band, they really flew. They they gelled as a group, because you don't it's like 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 the Rolling Stones. You don't want five Mick Jaggers. You you've got to have all this total mix of different personalities. And we we had that with the Steel Band. We had we had the Mick Jagger and we had the Charlie Watts and we had all. And they all gelled, and from that point, then um, when we when we we got it all together, things things just kind of snowballed. <laughs>
actually torque the pans. Um, quite simple. I used to like, just three notes at a time. Everything, every, everything is like building a house, really. Everything's like building a house. You've got to, you know, you get your foundations and everything else. So I just teach three notes, then another three notes, and after a short while, the speed at which that they would learn, phenomenal. You could just teach the three, you know, learn a whole phrase very quickly, and then I teach say two at a time, and then they could just go on, and then another two, then another two, because you've not got to get bored. The main thing is don't get bored, and then when they all know the parts all get together and then the magic takes place and it just that's a, a phenomenal moment now you know when it all comes together as long as it works because sometimes the, the 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 glory of having a steel band in front of you is it if you make mistakes when you you you're transcribing you can change it all it's like having your own little orca it's fantastic because you think that is not working or that's not working so we'll try this we try the other thing so um, it's just like have, like comedians have run-throughs with all the jokes before the performance. It's like that. So by the time a piece actually got onto the stage, it it was as good as it's ever it's ever going to be. Thing that got me as well is, especially when I looked at them again. I, I looked at the, the I had the, the videos from down to digital, and I hadn't seen them for years. I only glanced at them in the original time, and I was staggered by how they were watching me, how they were interpreting what was going on, how they were watching each other, and I was just staggered by it. You know, it was as though it was somebody else. You know, it was, and I and I heard it, and I thought, "What is that?" And it was like, you know, a ghost of myself. It was somebody else down there doing it, and it was just this electricity they created, which, at the time, you, I, I didn't realize it was, it was actually being created. You know, and I this this is going off at a tangent, but I just the thing I remember more than anything else is when we played at the the Royal Albert Hall, and it was the second time, so. The audiences knew who we were. And at the Albert, Royal Albert Hall, before you actually go on stage, you go through a little tunnel. It's a dark tunnel. It's called the Bull Run. So we all, you all go down the tunnel. And then suddenly it opens out like a coliseum. So it's, and I just remember the heat of the audience. 
and the roar of and me i get goose pimples now still thinking about it and we just went out there and the audience was roaring and the heat was coming across and you could see the the, the band they almost grow six feet it's amazing how an audience can can pull a performer forward and then we start and the confidence it's amazing it's amazing i just remember i, I just remember that's one of the uh golden moments of more and also they were so what's the word humble they weren't conceited because when we we go around a lot of these um these music venues you see these very arrogant children playing violins and doing everything you know and, and orchestral steel were considering how how good they were and how, how talented as a group of, of children they were they were just normal you know they just they didn't they weren't arrogant or anything. It was just a uh, just a normal thing to do. I've been very lucky. Sometimes I got the British Composer Award for a piece I wrote. I got the George Butterworth Award for contemporary music. For that was for a steel pan piece. That was a um, I wrote a piece that was about a view from the music room at Seymour Road. Of it was called Hill Clouds. So if you look out the music room on certain days, you can see the hills and rain windows looking out the window and vanishing orchestras the vanishing orchestra was the orchestral steel that vanished and that one won this award and i wrote another piece as well for steel pan that's that's being used in the um, association boards um it just uses all different techniques on steel pan and that came about because of all the experience i had with orchestral steel you know i, I learned it had, it's had such an influence on my life all that really has that um, orchestral seal thing.